My dear people, I've been asked to say a few words in English on being a spouse of Christ. Because on this day, Veronica ceases to belong to herself. She gives herself to our Lord. Holy Church consecrates her to him, sets her aside for his exclusive delight. We call this consecration an espousals, a marriage. That is because this is the closest word we have to describe the relationship of a religious sister to her divine Lord. Everything we see at this sacred ceremony speaks this language. The wedding dress, the ring, the habit, the veil. And whilst this is not the day of a solemn profession, it is the definitive break with all that has gone before in the life of this young woman. At a wedding ceremony, the groom offers his vows before the bride. And before the wedding, he is the one who proposes. It is the same today. Our Lord chose Veronica. In the Canticle of Canticles, we read, My beloved is white and ruddy, chosen out of the thousands. She is white, that is, she is pure. She is ruddy, that is, she is desirous of me. She is chosen from thousands, indeed. What more could be true than that phrase? Chosen from thousands. Out of the many young women of her generation, Veronica has been marked out, singled out by our Lord to be his. He is the one who proposes to her. The psalmist says to her, Listen, O daughter, give ear to my word. Forget your own people and your father's house. He is your Lord. Pay homage to him. You have heard that call, that soft whisper, Veronica. And so you are leaving behind everything. The psalmist continues. She is led to the court with her maiden companions. She is escorted with gladness and joy. They dwell within the palace of the king. This holy sanctuary will be your home now, Veronica. The palace of the king, where you will wait on him, serve him and love him. This will be a consecration that does not pass away. We read in the book of the Apocalypse of the virgins who follow the Lamb wherever he goes. And we read in St. Luke's Holy Gospel that Martha, that St. Martha is told that Mary has chosen the better part in resting at the Lord's feet. And our blessed Lord says, this shall never be taken away from her. Truly, you have chosen the better part, Veronica. You are leaving the world with its many, many dangers to your salvation. You are flying from the snares so which could so easily drag you into sin and the fires of hell. You are embracing a life ordered towards your salvation. But you are not merely bringing greater security to your eternal salvation. No, you are to experience a foretaste of the life of the blessed, even now. For no one who leaves husband, father, mother, sister, brothers and land 
will not go without a hundredfold reward, even in this life. Of course, in every marriage and every espousal, there is suffering. And there is the cross. But surely, there can be no sweeter cross than the one embraced by the Bride of Christ. Because she knows that her cross will only strengthen her espousals to him and bring her into even greater union with the one who loved her first and loved her to the utmost. My friends, when we see the Holy Cross, we are reminded of this love. But it is a love our Lord has not only for his brides, has it for each one of us here present. The cross is our Lord's sacrifice for each one of us. But alas, how little we respond to this love, how cold we are to him, how little we sacrifice for him. Yet St. Paul says, Christ died so that they who live might not live for themselves, but for him, whom for their sake died and was raised. You religious sisters. And Veronica, joining the sisters today, you are our Lord's, our Holy Lord's consolation in the oblation of your lives, in your dedicated love of our blessed Saviour. And you are called to make reparation for us who remain in the world and render our Lord so much less than he deserves. We thank you for your exclusive love of our Lord, which turns away his anger for the sins of mankind and prevents the chastisements we justly deserve. Veronica. Today you join these sisters in this holy vocation of love and reparation. Today the church consecrates you to the Lord for this end. But remember, it is the Lord who called you. It is his special gift to you. And a gift that calls you into the heart of the church to serve the whole church with your love, to convert sinners through your love, to change the course of history with your love. May Almighty God bless you in this holy work. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.